This is day 40 of my six mark challenge for AQA GCSE Science. In the run up to the GCSE exams, from Monday to Saturday, each day I'm posting a new six mark question so that you can structure your revision around these and practice these extended response answers. There's a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also the playlist containing all of the videos in the series so far. Before you start writing your answer to today's six mark question, I just want to remind you that despite the fact you're given a whole sheet of A4 to answer this question, it is not an essay question and you aren't given any additional credit for writing in paragraphs or even in full sentences. It's really easy to just start waffling on and not get any marks at all, but feel really good because you filled up the whole sheet. So what I would strongly recommend you do is give your answer in the form of bullet points or particularly for a question like this where you're comparing things in the form of a table. Remember, all of the six mark evaluate questions for GCSE Science share one common mark scheme. So we know that you need to be comparing the different things that are listed in the question. And that means giving advantages and disadvantages of every single one. And then it's crucial that at the end you write a conclusion. All of these six mark evaluate questions share a common mark scheme where to get into level three, you need a strongly justified conclusion. In other words, if you don't pick one of these to be your favorite and say why you can't get more than four marks. If you haven't done so already, pause the video now and give yourself six minutes to answer this six mark question. To get full marks in this question, you're going to need to include advantages and disadvantages of all three methods of contraception. So I would definitely lay my answer out in the form of a table, because this gives me six clear boxes that I need to fill in to make sure that I do give those advantages and disadvantages of each method. It's also going to make life much easier for my marker because they can see very clearly that I have covered all of these criteria rather than wading through pages of waffle that I've written and potentially missing that at some point I have covered all of these things. Now, it's also OK if you want to say that something is true for all of these. So, for instance, they all have the advantage that these are reversible methods. Um, it's not like sterilization where it's potentially permanent. But then we want to go through each of these in turn. And you might want to also include some information about how they work, but strictly that's beyond the bounds of this question. But a lot of people would start their answer by pointing out that condoms are a barrier method of contraception. Now, the major advantage of condoms is their accessibility. So you can go to the GP, you can go to the GUM clinic, or you can just buy them yourself from a supermarket if you're too embarrassed to talk to another human being. Another big advantage is that it's really easy to choose to start using them or stop using them, depending on whether or not you actually want to have a baby. So if a couple decide that now they are ready to have children, then they can just immediately stop using condoms and they would be able to conceive. A third big advantage is that they also protect you from STDs. So particularly if you're in a relationship with a new partner or if you have multiple partners at the same time, you're protecting yourself from all of those sexually transmitted diseases. And then finally, unless you have a latex allergy, you aren't going to experience any physical side effects. And to be honest, even if you do have a latex allergy, you can buy condoms that don't contain latex. Now, in terms of the disadvantages, the big one is that it is the least effective of these methods of contraception. If condoms are used properly, then they can be as high as 98% effective. But the reality is that lots of people don't use them properly and they tear or a couple forgets to use them. And then actually the pregnancy rate can be as high as 18%. Also, as we said, you do need to actually remember to use it in the heat of the moment. And some people struggle with that and would be better off using a method of contraception that they didn't have to think about every time that they had sex. Next up is the oral contraceptive. So that's either the pill which contains estrogen and progesterone, or there is also the mini pill which just contains progesterone. And often you would use that if you have a particularly bad reaction to estrogen. So for instance, if there is a history of blood clots in the family, then the doctor will prescribe you the progesterone only pill instead. Now, one big advantage of the pill is that it's twice as effective as a condom in terms of if you're using it typically. And then you might also want to include that um, lots of people find when they take the pill, it makes their periods lighter or less painful. 
I've put this in a different colour here because, strictly speaking, this question says as a method of contraception, and that's not an advantage as a contraceptive, it's just a different advantage of taking it. But there have been questions in the past where AQA have given you information and asked you to evaluate, and they have included in it information about people's periods. So I think it is worth putting in your answer, but I wouldn't include it as your only advantage of the pill. Then in terms of the disadvantages, of course, there are side effects. So lots of people experience mood swings or weight gain. And as I've mentioned, taking the pill can increase your chance of having blood clots. So if you have a history of deep vein thrombosis in the family, then they won't prescribe you the traditional pill with estrogen in it. Also, you need to actually remember to take it. So if you're someone who's very forgetful or if you have a lifestyle where you can't maintain a regular schedule and take the pill at the same time every day, then it's probably not a great contraceptive for you to be using. And then also it doesn't protect you against STDs. So that's fine if you have one partner that you're having sex with and you've both been tested. But if you have a new partner, then you probably need to be using condoms at the same time. Then we have our intrauterine devices. And it's worth pointing out at this point that although if you talk to the NHS, they'll talk about an IUD and they mean the copper coil. And if they were talking about the plastic Mirena coil, they would call that an IUS. AQA used the term IUD to refer to both of these. So there was a question in 2018 and they talked about copper coils and plastic coils and they called them both IUDs. So they might be expecting you to talk about both of these here. Now, the first big advantage of the IUD is that it has an extremely high success rate, far higher than any of the other contraceptive methods. And part of the reason why it's so high is that once it's been inserted for the copper coil, you don't need to worry about it for the next 10 years. And even for the Mirena coil, you don't need to worry about it for five years. So you might have regular checkups to make sure it hasn't moved, um, but basically it's in and you are protected and you have that really effective contraceptive. So if you're certain that you're not going to want to have a baby for the next five years, then it's a great way of making sure that that doesn't happen. Again, we can mention that for the Mirena coil in particular, it often makes periods lighter and less painful. But as we said, for the contraceptive pill, you wouldn't want that to be your only advantage because this question is specifically talking about contraception and that's not contraception. Then in terms of disadvantages, Having it inserted in the first place is not a comfortable procedure. They used to only insert them into women who'd already had a baby, so their cervix had already opened up. Um, nowadays, you can have it done before you've had children, but it's not comfy. Also, if you change your mind and you decide that now you are ready to start having a family, then it's not something that you can just take out yourself. You have to go back to the doctor. And so you might have to wait a few weeks to be able to get an appointment in order for that to happen. Um, so it's not you know, a huge thing. It's not like being sterilized. Um, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that you can just turn around one day and say, right, we're ready to have a baby. Let's go. And then like with the pill, it's not going to protect you against STDs. So here we've got our advantages, we've got our disadvantages, we've got all six boxes filled in. But as you know, for an evaluate question to get full marks, we need that strongly justified conclusion. So you have to pick one of these to be the favourite and you have to explain why. Realistically, you're probably going to go either for condoms or for the IUD. And so you're either going to be saying that um, in conclusion, I think the best is condoms because they're really easily accessible and they're cheap and they protect you from STDs and all these things, no physical side effects. Or you might think of it from the point of view of, um, of a long term couple where possibly the high success rate um, and the long time period for an IUD might be more appropriate. So you could justify either one of those, but you need to make sure that you explicitly say this one is the best one. And here are all the reasons why. For tomorrow's question, we have another evaluate question, but this time it's for chemistry. Don't forget, you can find a link in the description below to all of this week's questions and also all of the videos in the series so far all together in one playlist. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you back again tomorrow for day 41 of the Six Mark Challenge. If you have found this video useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCC Science Revision videos coming soon.